Eid Mubarak to all our Muslim faithfuls. It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi. Runners always have the ladies with me. Hello, Damilola. In the building. I'm, How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I Good think vibes. We, ah, we brought in the Muslim. We have to support our Muslim brothers and sisters. And yes. I want to say Barakah de Salah to every Muslim celebrating the end of Ramadan. May Allah accept our act of Ibadah like this. And all those things that people stop doing Ramadan. Don't pick it. It's not, it will not pay you at the end of the day. <laughs> How are you doing though? <laughs> I didn't do that. How are you? I'm doing very well. I liked when you said the things that we stopped doing. We should uh, be, be, things they stopped doing. They should not pick it up. Um, this morning, my, my parents are in my house, so trust me. In the morning, they are listening to Koko Nuwe Ruin and um, mm. something on radio. That was how one pastor wanted to preach on radio. He said, "It's not your alarm that woke you up. You set alarm." But it is God that woke you up. Yeah. I went and I was like, hmm, it's true, this is our Yoruba. You know, the way they will say it in Yoruba, it will just come across very differently. And sometimes we just feel like we just go about our activities, yeah. but we should reverence the fact that there are some things. He said, you, you, if, um, um, the pers if a rich person can buy oxygen, but he cannot force himself to take it in. I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Wisdom. 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 <laughs> so I got it some very, uh, yes, I got some very humbly wisdom that made me start to watch worship God differently this morning. So, um, yes, to all the Muslim, all our Muslim, it's, it takes a whole lot to fast the way diligently. I want to shout out to all my children, all those small, small fasting children. I know someone that, um, a 12 year old that fasted half of the entire period. And I'm like, I want to really celebrate every young child that fasted throughout this period. You are amazing. It takes a lot of discipline yeah. to do what you did. Amaka Fresh, in the building. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. So I want to say back at Salah to every Muslim person, you know, out there. You know, it's amazing. Like she said, please don't pick up any bad habits. And I really love the habit of sharing food. Please don't stop sharing the food. <laughs> we love that. And I just came back from the East. Um, I went to, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. I had a great time. Oh. Although it was for sad um, events, funerals, but for older people, like people in their 80s yeah. and stuff. So it's more like celebration of yeah. life. Right. So uh, being in the East is always amazing. I had an amazing yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, you, you are very assimilated into the Yoruba culture. <laughs> they know that it's a celebration of life. In the other culture, they respect the dead. Yoruba is just... No, Evo celebrate, celebrate, celebrate life. Celebrate life. Celebrate they do serious life. party yeah. Yeah. overnight. Yeah. Party. Serious, serious oh, party. I had a blast. Yes. Oh, I think they even do more overnight yes, parties. Overnight, than they we do, do overnight. Yeah. overnight. Yeah. overnight. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. 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 that's my ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> but I have plenty of people to celebrate. Ah, please you know, go I'm ahead. I'm for a Fuja family. Yeah. <laughs> I guess these days I don't need the entire Fuja family <laughs> right now, headed by Laji was Waidi Fuja. And the entire Fuja, I greet you. Eid Mubarak <laughs> today. My auntie, Mrs. Ramota Erogogo, Mrs. Honorable. Is our Mubarak auntie, Dali, oh. uh, Rewa, all of our aunties. <laughs> then, then my special aunt, my mom's very good friend, uh, my auntie also, Mrs. Shitu, um, in Dolphin Estate, and every other person out there who's celebrating um, the end of the Ramadan. Congratulations. Um, Eid Mubarak to all of you. My prayer, my prayer is that all your prayers during the 30 days be answered mm. and God will make us see more Ramadans in future. And to Nima, yes, uh, Ramat that's our very and Moyo, yes. they yes, are all sir. Muslims on yes. your view and we okay. just celebrate them today also. May they, may they all benefit from the blessings mm -hmm. of this season. Yes. Let's go on a short break now. When we come back, look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Eid, let's rebuild together. President urges Nigerians. Four buildings collapse, 14 at risk after Lagos market fire. Federal government extends holiday till tomorrow. Fantastic Falcons qualify for Paris 2024. Fireworks with NLC throws LP into turmoil. Lagos Calabar Coastal Road will connect all regions, says Umahi. Ulubado, succession intrigues deepen ahead decision day. UBA doubles assets to 20.7 trillion naira. Aida Tiwa, Jimo, Akintariwa, okay, others for screening. Okay. And uh, which story are we starting with? Each who has a story for the president? Who has? Uh, no, I have the Olubado succession intrigues dipping ahead of um, the decision day. And this one is saying to us this morning that a new blanket of confusion is spreading over the succession process of the Olubado of Ibadan land. As uh, suspicion is thickening that Olubado in council members may boycott the meeting slated for tomorrow, during which Oba Ola Owolabi Olakuleni is expected to be pronounced the Olubado designate. However, um, the Otumba logo of Ibadan, Obataju Din Ajibola, formally made the claim on Tuesday. He told reporters that Olakuleni was not medically fit mm. for the throne. I think for me, this is the second time I'm picking this story because um, tradition is very, I'm huge on tradition. And these are the things that we leave, the legacies that we leave behind for our younger ones. But I, I thought that growing up, it used to be the younger people that were supposed to succeed the throne, so at least they could spend a li a, their lifespan mm. having um, the Awujale. Uh, well, Lula that's what I think. As all, culturally, has yeah. always been old people, but yeah, yeah, yeah. now the designate is not even, they are saying that he's not medically fit mm, for right. the throne. It means that are we living the cultural setting yeah. to now try to advance into something else? Maybe well, we should just okay. find a balance all around right. it. Okay, let's move on to the story. Um, so, uh, Works Minister Dave Umahi yesterday said former Vice President Atiku Abubakar's poor understanding of figures made him goof in his analysis of the 700-kilometer lagos Calabar coastal road. Specifically, he said, uh, apart from the economic benefits of the project, it will connect the entire country. Umahi described the issues raised by Atiku as gross misrepresentation of facts and figures and a ploy to mislead Nigerians. Um, he, he said that, um, I'm trying to even get his, he said he added that part of, at the other, apart from the total cost of the project being unknown, which is over a trillion naira, had been released for the pilot phase, which starts from Eco Atlantic on Victoria Island to the, Le uh, to the Leki Deep Sea Port. Um, he also stated very specifically that the president says, um, so he said that Atiku doesn't understand figures. I'm going to run figures for him to understand. And he will understand how prudent the administration of the president, Tinubu, has been. We also understand how prudent um, is taking center stage, prudence is taking center stage in this administration. I will do that in the press conference in my visit to Lagos this week. So we're expecting the figures, hopefully, to get some articles, some tutoring, the numbers. <laughs> the numbers. Okay, yeah. so um, it's so sad that some people are celebrating and then some people are crying. Mm. Four buildings collapsed following a fire which engulfed part of the Sumu market on Lagos Island yesterday and that's like yeah. my favorite market mm -hmm. where you shop souvenirs, yeah. amazing things at very very good prices yes. so it's so painful. Lagos um, Territorial Coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency Mr. Ibrahim said 14 other buildings were seriously impacted by the fire. According to him the cause of the fire could be attributed to the refueling of a running generator which, um, mm. which they said was purportedly started from um, a printing house by one Mr. Uche. So the, the generator was running. Instead of turning it off and refueling, yeah. instead of refueling it, <gasps> wow, oh, we was know on, that. On. you got to be kidding. And then it then. now triggered, you know, other the generators fire. and the fire. Oh, spark. yikes. Yeah, so they said emergency responders at the scene of the event included NEMA, Federal and State um, Fire Services, Police and Fire Services of the Nigerian Fort Authority. It's also stated, stated that billions of Naira... Oh, you know, what of Naira goods, property, yeah, property goods, yeah. everything was Gosh. lost. It's so sad, and people are, are crying. Um, they also state, said that the, um, the Lagos state government has ordered immediate suspension of commercial activities in Dosumu Street and its immediate envir environs. Really, really sad. Reasons, yes. Really, really sad indeed. Really I know really that um, uh, we have our correspondent there today, so we'll mm. be linking up very soon at some point in the show just to get an update so that um, some of the 
state officials might be visiting that place this morning. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to see that. Yeah. Yes, talk, we have a story in nation. Um, yes, I want to take the president's message. The president, um, in his goodwill message to Muslims, his Idu Fitter message came out yesterday and he said that Nigeria, we should see Nigeria like um, a clay and that every citizen is a sculptor mm -hmm. and that what you <coughs> hold is what it becomes, which was why the headline was let's rebuild together. So it was stressing unity, stressing un togetherness as critical factors in nation building. That he, hold, um, he, he also, according to a statement, he also mentioned the fact that this end of Ramadan um, is an old the hallowed season and we should remain submissive to God and his command of sacrifice alongside other um, major players within the Nigerian leadership space, the Senate president also gave his, uh, gave his own speech asking that Nigerians should be more tolerant, push for peace and sacrifice, as well as the Khan, that's the Christian Association of Nigeria, also urged Nigerians to be united as we celebrate this season. I, I feel like it's important that we keep on talking about unity, yes. talking about peace, talking about tolerance, because whenever we're doing this festive season, the reason we're all dressed up, Christian and Muslim, on the show here is because we want to send that message that we celebrate everything, we're all yeah. together, we're one. Okay, moving on quickly now to the punch. <clears throat> President Bax Cardoso vows for the clamp down on racketeers. Fire raises 14 Lagos market buildings, four structures collapse. Gunmen kill five in Benue, 17 victims get mass burial. Impeachment, Shebu Wright, CJN, and APC members won against ex deputy governor's re re um, return. Ondo, APC panel screens, Aida Tiwa, Akinterewa, and others. Coastal road project not wasteful, Umahi slams Atiku. Dealers demand 850 naira to the uh, liter diesel as Dangote marketers meet. And Ido Fitri, let's build Nigeria together, Tunubu governor Senate tells Nigerians. Okay, let me take the major headlines. So, hmm. I don't know if you guys have heard the new jive. If Cardoso says so, or something like that. If Cardoso <laughs> says so, Cardoso can do it, or Cardoso oh. can do it. Some, some, some jive that is trending. But anyway, so he said the presidency on Tuesday said the concerted efforts of the Yemi Cardoso-led central bank aimed at stabilizing the Naira is yielding good um, fruit. Um, it's vowed to continue, the government has vowed to continue its campaign against racketeers, urging Nigerians to expect a stronger Naira that will reflect in a significant drop in the prices of essential commodities in the first uh, quarter of 2025. Uh, Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Ajiri Ngalali, was saying that, um, I was speaking at the backdrop of the recent series of the measures rolled out by the Cardoso led CBN. He also specifically said that the presidency on Tuesday vowed to sustain the momentum, saying regulatory agencies would go, for, go, go after racketeers and malign actors bent on frustrating the efforts of the government. Many of us have seen um, the Naira strengthen in the last few weeks. Um, as of yesterday, I think it was, one, was it Naira 1,178. So, and, and they're hoping that it will continue to gain strength as more of these policies roll out and are sustained over the coming weeks. We're waiting for the best. So, if Cardoso says so, Cardoso can do so. Do so. Yes, Cardoso can do so. Mm. Cardoso oh, says so, Cardoso can, can do so. so. Ha, oh. get, 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 get. <laughs> yeah. Nigeria is full of creatives. <laughs> As in... All right, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ike Chuku, Sunday, Okonkwo. AKA Ike Chuku, Sunday, Okonkwo, AKA Cross. Are your intro without you? Wow. So there's a name that thing that's. I'm just drinking because you said I should drink. There's no particular answer. You think it's only that can be wicked? What's the answer? Sort of huge. Eh? Yeah. They claim you did. But you said it just happened. That and it's called what again? Sort of huge. Sort of huge. S U B T E R F U G. So you look me finish from head to toe. You look at a person who could know what to be called. Such, 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 such. <laughs> yeah. The nude wasn't like a game plan. Or... I promise you, be it was actually a mistake. Be like, it was sending it to someone and it just mistakenly just went down there. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas.
It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked, and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> 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 How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I will drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. <laughs> She, you didn't want me, me. You didn't want me, no. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know? <laughs> you know? It's, out there. it's supposed to be, yeah. I just said, let me take a give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there! <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there! You did not, you, you did not say final answer. It's final answer. You did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you. Yeah, how, many, how many cameras do they have? Nikon. I went to drink, I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We're still taking punch. What's the story? Yes, so I want to take the story from um, the Oba of Benin was receiving some, um, it detached the command, hmm. the Oba of Benin, I'm trying to open my story, sorry. The okay. Oba of Benin was trying to, was receiving, it detached the, 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 the Sorry, you. Okay, let me, let me, have let, me, let, me let me take yes. Okay. Go ahead. Oil marketers have called for a downward review in the pump price exactly. of the automotive's gas oil, popularly called diesel, um, being produced by the Dangote Petroleum Refinery to between 700 and 850 naira per liter, uh. as operators plan to meet managers of the refinery <laughs> next week. The largest downstream marketing association, the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, which made the call in an interview with The Punch, said the 1,225 naira per litre diesel price from the indigenous refinery was high because the, the commodity was produced in Nigeria and not mm. imported, which makes sense. Yeah. So the Petron Products Retail Outlets Owners Association of Nigeria also called for a reduction in the price of Dangote diesel. According to the oil marketers, diesel produced at the Dangote refinery has no vessel cost. It has no import charges and other costs associated with the cost associated um, with the importation of commodity into Nigeria. Yeah. So they are calling that it doesn't make sense for them to be buying it at the same price, almost at the same landing costs, yeah. if they are importing diesel. So I wanted to ask the, the machines they used to refine it, was it created in Nigeria or was it no, 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 no,
Yes. Was it, did we, did we dash, was it international loans or local loans? No, no, no. no, no. They're thinking that if, if the, refi yes. refi the price from the refinery abroad should be the yes. same price from refinery here yes. because it's the same process and the same costing. So yes. the one yes. here is, is higher than the yes. one abroad? Yes. It's no, almost, no, it's it's relative, almost, almost the same. Almost the, same. The, one, the landing cost for the one abroad is 1220 Yes. Then here it's almost the same thing, right? right. So it doesn't make sense because you, the partition charges, you're not doing that. Okay. Okay. The vessel cost, you're not paying for that. Yes. And, yes. Then, and, and, uh, and then people are also so um, we have to um, put into consideration logistics from Lagos yeah. too, yeah. from the refinery. Okay, we'll wait for them to sense. respond to yes. that. Any other story from Punch? Yes, yeah, so I was trying, the name I was trying to get, I, the, um, the, the general, Brigadier General Ebenezer Uduyebo, he was the one that visited, is the, command, the new commander of the 4th Brigadier of the Nigerian Army. He visited the um, Oba of Benin and he, um, the Oba extended his condolences to the army and said that there was no justification of, for the killings that took place in Okoma. He also mentioned that the um, Nigerian army is seen to be very disciplined and a force to be reckoned with and should not be treated anyhow. He extended his wishes to the chief of army staff um, for, uh, for the consistency in the work they've been doing over, since he took over um, his leadership in the army and generally because we, all the um, obas have been have spoken about this thing he hasn't said anything and i have to respect my in-laws so mm -hmm. i had to take the story however okay. there is a more painful story that happened in benway state where five people were killed in a fresh attack 17 people um 17 of the vict victims are getting mass burials in benway state this happened in upper local government agatsu and their west local government areas of the state. The one of the person killed was at, at, while another person where people were attacked on their farmland. These are people doing their regular businesses and its impact has a ripple effect. Um, and humanitarian worker Joseph Adakole said that the continuous attack by armed invaders in Idoma land and is getting out of hand. People are being killed every day. Houses are being burnt right. every day. <laughs> Destruction of farm produce have become unbearable. And it's part of the effect we are getting with farm produce getting more expensive down south yeah. because these people cannot, cannot yes, they can't do their can't farm. Harvest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Daily Sun, Kano Governor Ganduji fight gets messier. ADC calls for coalition of patriots, uh, parties to save Nigeria. This calls blame system outages on inability to meet 20 hour power supply to band A. Ohanese laments hostilities against Igbos. Um, Lagos Calabar Highway project, article fires another salvo at Tinumbu. More trouble for impeached Edo Deputy Governor. And Olubadon elect physically unfit to ascend throne or Tun says Otun Balogun. Okay, which story? Is that right so I'll take um, the Ohanese the cries for slitters against Ibo. Yeah. Um, Ohanese and Ibo worldwide has said they were pro provocative attacks against the Ibo in various parts of Nigeria outside Ibo land. This is um, as the president general of the Apex Ibo Social Cultural Organization, Emmanuel Iwaya, de declared its resolve to protect the interests of Ibo people anywhere in the world, saying it was the group's core mandate. Wayan will describe the Igbo as creative, hardworking, industrious, and enterprising people. Yes, we are. <laughs> Noting that, unfortunately, these qualities has brought them envy from various people. Mm. Um, he, the, and the main um, thing he's trying to also state today is the fact that compensation um, for people, for um, Igbo people in Lagos, that their houses and properties were demolished, demolished, that they should get compensation for that because that they've, they've gone through the whole um, legal work and no paperwork, and they found out that the Igbos, that their properties, their properties were demolished, that they actually went, they actually Through purchased due and went through uh, due process. Okay. So Lagos State Government... They have their COO. Yes, they have their COO of O. They, went, they followed due process to acquire those buildings and to build. They had the building permit. And the Lagos State has a right, like any other government, to um, take over any building or any land. But those people should be adequately compensated. Yeah. And Lagos State saying that they will not compensate those people or taking their time to compensate those people is a problem for the Ohanese group. And I hope that I've been afraid to fight for those Yoruba. Yes. Uh, uh, I have uncles too, whose houses have been demolished. Mm -hmm. Who yes. have so have any very to show also fight because one is they doing what they should do because yes. I thought I was like yes. don't politicize, don't turn it into a religion. Yeah, I find it very fight. I think I should speak well, aside up. Aside from yeah. that, but I don't even think we should even tribalize this conversation. These are Nigerian citizens. Yes. Yeah. Anybody's building is demolished, they 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 are entitled to different tribes. Regardless of which tribe. Regardless of the tribe. Yeah. Ohanese is hungry, I understand. However, I hope that other groups too can speak up for your own people.
Okay, right. let's um, Daily Sun, Anderson. Yes, major headline. The, I've been taking the Ganduji story. I was thinking there's a new update. Maybe it's a new um, attack from the side of the Ganduji team that are saying that um, the governor has left governors to focus on Ganduji. The Ganduji accusation is still the same. 415 and 413,000 um, has, according to them, allegedly public form misappropriated and 1.3 billion um, bribery case against him. It's against him, his wife as well. So the case is going to court. They said that there will be a the, the fight is getting a, a messier, that's what they are saying. But that next week there will be an arraignment, and we've been taking since Monday every day. And DJ story has been making front headlines. And I understand the fact that the governor wants to get justice for the people, see how much of the funds can be repatriated. But let's also ensure that as we are making the Ganduji story, let's also make Kano, the governance within Kano gets headlines. Let's, let's, let him also talk, share about the developments going on within the state, how he's providing governance for the people so it's balanced, so that nobody will attack him and say that he's only defaulting somebody. Mm. Okay, Nigerians on that band, A. Eh? Assad lampooning various electricity distribution companies' discourse for failing to provide them with sufficient electricity as agreed. The frustrated citizens swamped various social media platforms to vent their anger. Meanwhile, various discourse have started publishing inability to meet the required power supply as directed by NERC. Uh, on April 3rd, NERC approved an increase in electricity tariff for customers under band A including my husband. Stressing <laughs> band A. <laughs> band A. They said we are getting 20. My husband has started having a potential for his... He has started palpitating to us. He has never... He has never gotten the bill. He's already anticipating. I said, calm down. Let the bill confess. Now, under band A, customers are entitled to a minimum of 20 hours of power supply mm. per day, and all these schools have been authorized to implement the policy immediately. However, to ensure transparency, NERC said uh, where the discos failed to deliver... On the committed level of service to the band A feeder for two consecutive, consecutive days, the disco should the next day by 10 a.m. publish on its website reasons for failing. So if you don't have electric power in band, if you're in band A, if you don't have power in two days, discos are required to publish exactly what caused the failings. They, they, they tell us every but, day, but they take it. That's the point. Mm -hmm. They take it regularly. We don't have. Hey. We, we can only charge us band A I am if you waiting. are giving us 20 to 24 hour power supply. Very. So today it's going to disconnect all the power, disconnect all the air conditioners, <laughs> and going to go and buy a fan for you. So in our room, we have buying fan for you, fan for me. <laughs> because he's so confused. I said, let the bill confess. After the bill confess, we'll see, we see how it's going to be. Let's just calm yeah, down. Yeah. Okay, our last paper for today, Vanguard. Tariff hike, 20% of Bandai. We talked about our users without prepaid meters. Uh, let's find a story we've not taken at all. Okwama Army Board begins sitting in worry. It will feature uh, FG as Thursday as extra holiday. 96th birthday, you are a true always, as Fenifer tells Adebanjo. And misappropriation, Ganduje, wife, others to be arraigned next week. Okay, which story? I'll okay, so I'll take the Okwama story um, because it has a legal mm. thing, connotation to it. The Board of Inquiry constituted by Defense Headquarters to probe the March 17 killing of 17 soldiers at Okwama Delta State is scheduled to commence sitting today in Worry. Chairman of the board, Air Vice Marshal David Ajayi, told Governor Sheriff Bovary in Worry, we are on a fact-finding mission and to apportion blame. We are here to gather facts from security agencies, community leaders, and the community dwellers. This report will also help us to ensure healthy communication that will enhance civil military relations and ensure that economic activities thrive again in the affected communities. Although the lawyers um, they said that the people, that the Okwama people cannot participate in the military inquiry because the Okwama people are displaced in the bush. How can people come out mm -hmm. to attend such meetings, right? That the right thing that should have been done was to um, allow the Okwama people to come back into their community. This would um, have given them conf confidence yeah. yes. in the military or whatever panel that they're trying to set up. Although the lawyer, their lawyer, um, Mr. Ejedegba, he also stated that the Okwama people um, cannot be part of this inquiry and that they won't appear. Why? Because you cannot be a judge in your own case. The military, have, the, the military also has questions to answer in, why, in the main, major reason why they were there in the first place, right? And why this thing happened. So they cannot be the ones setting up the panel. Mm. So, yes. So um, the, the lawyer is also um, correct in stating that the people will not be there because they are not subject to military 
military laws, mm. okay? okay. Um, yeah, and that like... Um, and the mili whatever the military comes up with would not have, because it won't have the opinion of the locals the on the ground. Yeah. Is a, I have a quick story from Edo State, so because it was follow-up on yesterday, that the, the APC, mem 12 of the APC members, not, this is not members, but these are like from the wards, 12 wards of the local government that um, Shaibu came from have come out to protest that he must not enter their own party. Ah. Yes, that they feel like because he has been impeached from mm -hmm. being a deputy governor from the PDP, PDP, PDP yeah. he would want to, they are hearing he wants to decamp to APC. So they have sent a message to the um, <laughs> national chairman, um, Alaji um, Abdullahi Gamduje, to say, and every other SCO, that we do not want mm -hmm. the former PDP yeah. deputy Post governor to come. Uh -huh. like, they, they said, nice. the, the headline was like, more troubles for impeach the new governor, as APC rejects him even before he says he's going yeah, to APC. I don't know, you guys, uh, only gone for one week. Are, are there everything? What happened? They have removed Shaibu. Our Shaibu that was on your view. Please, though. One week. They don't remove Shaibu. It's not fair. They said they're not putting one small guy. One uh, very girl. young mm. guy. They said he was bridge outside the government house. This, did you hear that one? And another, yeah. another, another video white. I saw that uh, was making rounds was um, in 2020 when um, he, was he, was, he was dancing. Yeah. So somebody's down for Adam. Adam. Somebody's down for land. You'll be all right. All of us have things All goes back on round. You'll be all right. Let's go on a short break now. We'll come back and move to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first. Woo! OJ right here, 7 of 7, like you already know. Benga right here, 7 of 7, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> Mm. Mm. It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So, okay. so now one chance for enter. My, My first, first question. question. Do you remember the names of the winners of that edition of StarQuest? Of course I do. Why uh, do you? And I, and, I, and, I, and I hate myself for this. Because I have this question for you. Final question. No. Where, where outside Nigeria and what year? I think you're the only one that can be wicked. I am thinking because I know back in the day... Don't think, oh, don't think. Answer my question quick, quick. You are thinking too much. I don't like it. The UK. Final answer. <laughs> okay. I said, God, God, please, let me to perform outside Nigeria. Wait, 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 and wait. And God wait. gave me a trip, a show in Ghana. <laughs> drink, my friend, drink, drink. Drink, drink, drink. I know. I don't, I don't overthink this thing. See where I can yes, you overthink him. I will say you should catwalk. <laughs> Let's catwalk. <laughs> Where are we? That's not cut okay. That's, that's good. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Pokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was 
close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said 75. 75. I confirm. Fellas was wasn't even born in 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You go drink. Go. Drink, take, take, take. Make I go make I help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Lights in in. Thanks for staying with us. Sometimes it's always good to highlight some of the good news that happens in Nigeria. So in the last few days. Naira has strengthened and it was important for us to discuss your thoughts on it. Let's hear your views on the renewed hope agenda of ensuring that our Naira is strengthened such that um, people can actually plan and budget. Because I remember very correctly, one of the reasons why um, the president had, or the federal government had stalled conversations with NLC concerning minimum wage, according to what I read um, concerning the press release by um, um, Ajurin Galali, said that we need to have a proper strengthened Naira such that when we peg the minimum wage, it is a number that, can, that is sustainable. Because the reason why we have this lopsided or um, 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 continuous um, review of our minimum wage is because we don't have the Naira keeps losing value over the years. But right now, if we're able to have a stable Naira, whatever NLC and government finally agrees on, federal, on, on minimum wage can then take people home. People can actually use that to sustain their lives for a longer period of time. So we're hoping with these um, new um, measures being taken by the federal government is sustained over time because that's when Nigerians are scared. Can we sustain this? Um, what are your thoughts on the, on the Naira? What are your thoughts on Nigeria? Especially when Cardoso said that, especially I saw a press release from the Central, Central Bank yesterday saying that they are not going to accept dollar as a collateral anymore. I didn't even know that was a problem. I didn't even yeah. know people were using dollar as collaterals yeah. to get money. Yeah. So they're not, they're not going to accept that anymore. They're giving them 90 days mm. to, um, to reverse this or there will be sanctions. So there's so many things going on out there. What are your thoughts on it? What does it, make, what does it mean to Nigerians? Do you even care about these strengthen of the narrative? Share your views with us close on 081 076 0902416344. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. As many of you know, your view is about ladies sharing their own views on social issues. So we'd just like to hear your own views. Also, join the conversation on the numbers on the screen. Let me start with the ladies. What are your thoughts? Naira, dollar. In fact, people are I, I, calling... I just feel, I, you know, the, the truth is, I feel that Nigeria, and that's why you said we should discuss it. I said that I jumped at it because if Naira had. If the reverse was the case, mm. we would have been discussing it and lamenting on it every day. Surprisingly, my social media family and friends have been mute. Quiet. They've just <laughs> been quiet. The people that were posting, dollar is now 1,007. Dollar is now 1,005. Dollar is now 1,000. Nobody is saying anything now. I bought dollar at 1,9. I bought at 1,650. I bought at 150. I have not bought since it became 1,2 because I've not traveled. But I, I traveled a lot in. Um, in March, so and because I was preparing for my trip, I had to buy, and it was painful. Yeah. I am extremely happy that the policies that the government is carrying out is generating results, and we must acknowledge and say when government is doing good work that the government is doing good work. This is good. The policies have been good. We so everybody say, oh, they, they are only controlling. Um, so demand, they're not controlling supply, they're not doing, no, this is not about whether they're controlling demand or supply, because you were, people were quick to yap them that they didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. The president's mm -hmm. reform has, has put us into problem. Businesses are folding down. You can see no business is saying that dollar is coming down, they are reducing price. Mm, okay. Interesting. So, yes. no, but when the dollar was going up every day, they were like, based on the increase of dollar, we have to change our price. This price is only valid for 24 yes. hours. This price is only valid for when dollar is remaining at this price. We are going to change our price now. We are not hearing any of that can we nigerians also call out good things and celebrate good things when we see okay, them you also a business okay, yes. here, so um are you reviewing your prices no, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. so um I, I i believe in the renewed hope of our president mm. I'm, I'm one of those but i really be and i and i love when they when they say kadoso when if kadoso says to so, kadoso, kadoso can, do, can so. do so because he's actually doing so 
Um, yesterday, I bought dollar, um, I changed dollar at um, 1,100. And I was like, whoa, this is He's good serious. news. Yes, and euro at 1,150. So that's super amazing. Things are changing. But then we should also, uh, it will take a while for, uh, for things to, to stabilize. Yeah. Because I want to believe that by next week, Kadosu would also bring it down to maybe 1,000 or 900. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm hoping so that maybe they can peg it at. I know you said, Mara, you said 900, but I'm hoping that let you me, can pick that. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me build on that a bit because yeah. Nigerians are hoping for a magic wand. Mm. Hadoso is not going to do that. Mm -hmm. We are the ones to do that exactly. by buying Nigerian, exactly. producing Nigerian, exactly. exporting Nigerian. Exactly. And when we do that, we begin to strengthen. strengthen the so Hadoso, yes, Hadoso says so, Hadoso can do so. We but but we Nigerians, we also have our own part to play. Party, yes. Let me come to you, Dan. What are your thoughts on this? I think for me, like you said, I'm going to tilt towards your angle because Nigerians are the problem of Nigeria itself. Nigeria is a country, I don't see it as a problem. But we Nigerians created the enormous problem we are trying to solve by force. And if we look at, okay, like I'm a business owner, I do sales of perfume. I remember that about a few months back, I stopped during one nine. And now the dollar is one one. I'm in a, I'm in a fix. Am I losing about how many mm. naira? Two, because most of those stocks have not ended. Exactly. You understand? And I now have to buy new stocks again. How do I now tell my customer that this that was worth 25,000, I want to sell it at 15,000? Mm -hmm. Then how would that 25,000 come to 15,000? It means that I'm ready to pack with that 10,000 naira exactly. difference, which is usually the problem mm. of Nigerian business owners because I have purchased at a higher price already. Now dollar is falling. But on the other hand, it's win some, lose some. Mm -hmm. There are some days that you even have more profit mm -hmm. for something little. You understand? So I think that business owner can also find a way around. Yes, we'll win, we'll win some, we'll lose some. Let's find a middle ground to say, let us be considerate to each other. Mm. Because sometimes it's not this government in conotion that is coming to patronize yeah. us directly. Yeah. It is we fellow Nigerians, our neighbors, our cousins, brothers and sisters. So the empathy is for we to ourselves. Then that's where the government you know, can pick it up. Something that's also interesting that, you know, people have come out to say that, oh, the light... Some stations have come out to say the dollar will be 1,000, 2,000 naira to the dollar. Some have come out to say that it can never get to 400 naira to the dollar. We have so many experts talking, and I'm just thinking, okay, can we stop waiting for some magic to happen mm -hmm. on realizing that we have a stake in this conversation? I also want to link the conversation to Airpeace. Airpeace recently launched, yeah. and uh, I was hearing rep reports that some, some other competing airlines, airlines are trying to reduce their prices. They started even reducing. They, they started reducing their yeah, prices. Reducing their you prices. Know, we, like, we like the competition, yeah, yeah. but Nigerians also, I think, in part we of to buy. we need to be responsible yes. to patronize uh, intentionally, uh, even yes, if it's more expensive. Because that dollar is not going to go. Yes. So I think in, in talking to ourselves, mm. yeah. if we want to help this Naira to strengthen, mm. we must all say... Carry face and say it's a piece or nothing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We almost, as Nigeria, yeah, we'll have exactly. to, we'll, we'll, our decision will form them to conform to what we want. Hey. It's not like they will also just she's sway even, us around. So what, what she's even saying is yeah. the loyalty to, so, the, to your country. country. Patriotism. Because yeah. your patriotism. Because even as you want the government policy to work, mm -hmm. we have our own part to play. Okay. Yeah. Um, the CBN, over the past one year, I've had to send $160 million to Emirates Airline. Mm. Because the reason Emirates stopped from Nigeria yeah. was because they couldn't repatriate their funds. their funds. And they are not coming back until they've gotten their funds. Now, it costs us a lot of money to send that money to them. But who paid the money to Emirates? Us. us yeah. If Epis is going to Dubai, why don't we go? Oh. If they, they, they can go. So let by the time we realize the impact, which is why we're doing this show, it's mm. educational. Mm. So when you understand that, if you pay other, I won't mention um, other global airlines, mm. if you pay other global airlines mm. to go to London, yes. when you could have paid Epis, it means that mm. we are spending pounds or dollars where yes. we could be spending, spending naira, naira, which is and our it own. saves us that money. Uh -huh. It also means that every time you make a choice to buy items and Maria is always calling us out ah, oh we middle have class yes. we want to have i have been calling out middle class and they said it's me like, because we are the ones that have this choice this this taste yeah the woman on the street doesn't care if you're eating, eating local she didn't have food out. it is you and i that are going to the supermarkets yes. to buy burgers yes. buying all this foreign things we have the we have the problems yes, and it's and from the Nigeria. yes and from tv my children have been shouting they want to eat sandwich they want to eat they want cheese and kiliko i say david and daniel child yeah. uh, yeah. cheese and it's not nigerian, nigerian. food Okay. I will buy you yam. <laughs> yes. I will buy you sweet potatoes. Exactly. My, you will take fruits. Yes. But all those imported one, it's no more. My I children gave me English. It's not healthy. My children gave me list when I was going oh, to Paris. Oh, this side the list. <laughs> yeah, well, you know how kids, I already told them that we're not buying clothes outside the country because yeah. there's no point buying clothes no outside, outside the, the country. country. Absolutely. So they knew that I'm not going to buy them clothes. 
But they now gave me food. Guess what? They now took pictures of foreign chocolates and snacks and chips and everything I wanted to buy. Mm. They now said, this is what they want. I was, I was going to the store to be looking for it. I said, Murayo, mm. there are Nigerian versions now. Yes. What's, what is all this nonsense? Yes. Because I was, not, I, was tr I was really struggling. What should I buy? What can I buy? I know okay, I don't have it in Nigeria. But I will buy it. But most of the things, I could find it in Lagos. Is it Cadbury brands? Mm. Is it Nestle brands? They are in Lagos. I didn't so bother. Are we now buy so are we buy it? It's, it's, just, it's just something that grew with us unconsciously. Yes. Yes. Now we are grown. We are now realizing that we've made the mistake from the inception. Yeah. Because sometimes it's a thing of status to me, the way I say like, yeah. oh, if you're not buying this brand and this brand, just the way some of our families are yeah. heavy on brands. Yeah. I know that when we were growing up, there was a certain type of beverage we yeah. We drink, yeah. and if you are going this beverage, like no, you are going for inferior, which is both Nigeria, no, <laughs> both Nigerian brands. So sometimes Just we discover more. that we were the ones that grew the taste of our children unconsciously yeah. with wanting to give them these frivolities of life. We call, we might say it's frivolities, but it's big mm -hmm. for them. Now that we want to redirect, it's now a challenge for us yeah. because we are meeting our own self at the junction. Mm -hmm. We we are honestly so I mean, we, as Tucker said, one of the reasons why it's important for us to have these conversations because it's one thing to say. The government is doing this. Yes, yes. But it's another thing to see what can I do to participate. Exactly. I think it was the president that was saying that we all must rebuild Nigeria yes. together. All of you pick your own chunk of clay mm. and, no, and start molding Nigeria you want. Exactly. Start molding that because I was really pain. You know, when I, when I was coming in the other day from the, from the airport, I was, I mean, I've not traveled in a long time. I'm not one of those very people that have not traveled in a while. And I recently I started traveling and I'm seeing the airport, the newly reconstructed airport yes. for the first time in a while. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't see this on social media. Nobody told me. I mean, it's not it totally, it didn't go, it didn't, it, it's not totally world class because I've been to other nations. Yes, it's nice, but I could enter Nigeria. I could read the signages. First of all, I could feel the air conditioner in the tunnels, which was great. I didn't used to do that back then. I didn't feel that back yeah, in the day. Yeah, just air conditioner in the tunnels. There were modern tunnels. Mm -hmm. And then you see the signages for transfers, for baggage claim. You see the, the glass of them sections. You see the chairs. And I'm thinking, this is Nigeria. Like it, this thing go viral. The immigration received me, told, told you to, to, to line up. In fact, I was upset with one of the yeah, ladies YouTube. behind me because we, they were, we were lining up at the immigration and they were taking their time checking. And it took me, I mean, I was like in line for about 15 minutes. And the woman was already complaining, What are they doing? They're wasting our time. I'm thinking, We're coming from Paris. And we stayed. We waited in line. Yes. We will stand. We conformed. We we hey, now you're in Nigerian soil. You're already complaining that they're wasting your time. 15 minutes old, you're already complaining. Because there are hundreds of us in the play. Well, I also but they were really, 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 yeah. Please. Go ahead, Amaka. Okay. I also think that um, Nigerian, uh, made the Nigerian um, companies should also put in a little bit of money in terms of advertising. I don't think we're doing a lot in that. For example, I'm happy with APs on how they pushed. Ah, they pushed. Yeah, they, they're they're heavy on that. But they, they're heavy on it, but they were not doing that um, with their Dubai flight. I didn't even know that APs used to go to Dubai. I, yeah, that was two years ago when I missed uh, my um, Emirates flight. Mm. And then... I was at the airport and I had to get on another flight and almost immediately. Almost immediately. And someone said, Oh, Epis at the new airport actually goes to Dubai. I said, Oh, I didn't know Epis goes to Dubai. Yeah. And I quickly rushed to the new airport. And that was my first time using the new airport. It was fantastic. I said, ah. So this kind of thing is even in, <laughs> in Lagos. <laughs> it's in Nigeria. Yeah. And I went to Epis and I bought um, uh, the tickets like. Uh, it was far, far cheaper. Far, far cheaper. Yes, I just yes. said, please, Emirates, give me back my money. Don't do Thank you. <laughs> I'll not do it again. And the funny thing was that I was the only person in business class. Nobody, Imagine when they that. served me, I told them, is there enough? I don't want any more. And that. I kept telling them, how come nobody, you guys are so good. How come the treatment I got, got to Dubai, they had the car, the service waiting yeah. for me. I said, how come nobody knows about this? Yeah. I said, doing videos and posting yeah. for them. Yeah. I tried to have them create awareness. And I said, but we found, so when I, after that, when I even met um, um, Oyema, I said, you, you put need to push the brand yeah. more. And I'm really happy with how they do that. So, now. same goes to... But see, see the Lagos... Own, um, uh, companies, too, in terms of... Um, the, Lagos, the Lagos London route is very yeah. important because many Nigerians... La mm, London is like going to Kedja. London is the nearest It's a huge, it's a exactly. huge market. Yeah. So, that was why probably why the publicity was really, yeah. really... But I think what, what, what we should get from this conversation is that mm. regardless of the expenses, yeah. we Nigerians must be intentional so about in picking you know. Nigerian brands, exactly. even the clothes we wear. Yes. We are talking about air flight. We're also talking about clothes. I could I, I, the clothes I, 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 were wearing. All of us to shop yeah. abroad now because, like, I'm like, ah, when I get back to it, Busaya will be so better. I don't need all of this. What is smart will do a good job. Like, what am I even doing? But I, I want to go back to what you said concerning um, the improvement that we see in government. Mm. I will tell you, me, I'm a frequent traveler in my small way. Mm. 
and I have seen improvement in the immigration service. Yeah. I've seen I've seen improvements in I I, have, I saw it by like it yeah. was so impressive mm -hmm. that I had to tell them that even my husband was like ah you guys I don't know what what did, did they did they change what the was system overhauling or whatever was done was done. If there was a difference and i think that we should always as we call out bad let's take the time to celebrate the good and i'm yeah. so grateful to god that i i informed every one of them that this is good and they all said that they are happy that, that i was the first person that was even highlighting it to them and most, many people were not doing yeah. they, they just walked past yeah. you when it's good you walk, walk past. past when it's bad you, you do video and, and, and yeah. Yeah. let's also you know that you're talking about the immigration the uniforms were clean yes crisp. they were courteous they will greet you you welcome you. How was your stay? Do you know, you know, and I'm like, ah. I, 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 I was really shocked. I, I think the kudos should actually go to no, the no, no, no. I, I can't hear anybody. I think the kudos should actually go to the minister because since um, Dr. Lubu Mitunji Ojo assumed duty, mm. uh, assumed office, there's been some radical change. Yeah. I've seen videos and pictures of him just walking to immigration office, una expected, unannounced, to mm. actually see what they do oh, firsthand. Wow. But a lot of times that probably some of our leaders, they just felt like <clears throat> what they portrayed to us was like, well, they will do the job. Let's be here. But now that we see practical leaders moving on to, to sites, to use their eyes to visualize. You can't be telling me that ah, oh, everything is fine. Let me not be able to go there and see that all is fine. So I think we have to also credit the minister so, for that particular um, coming initiative. Back to because the, it's you're absolutely bound. correct, um, Damila. Yeah. Absolutely correct. So it starts on the head. The leaders yes. must yes. show exemplary leadership. But going back to CBN, hmm. if Kadoso says so, Kadoso can do so. Get, 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 get. I love that jive. I think that's a little bit. Kadoso says so. Kadoso can do so. Go and sell your dollar. If you are keeping dollar, you are holding dollars. I got somebody. People were calling. I know somebody who was calling from the US saying, please, the dollar, please, let me go and sell it. Go and sell it. Because they've lost money already. They're thinking, sell it out because I need to. Let me have it in Naira. And that just gladdened my heart. I would rather keep your money in Naira than in dollar, at least for now. But the problem is sustainability. Kadoso. So I hope, yes, and our federal it. government, I hope our president are able to sustain um, um, this whole thing. But let me, let me let you take a few comments and we wrap up on this. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, I, I wanted to, let me take the comments. Let me know, say what is in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel that we, they can drive the change that we want to see. They, they, they can. And we will all support them to do it. Mm. Adi Ronke says that, um, but there's, still, there's inflation everywhere and there's no increase in income. Yeah. So I, I hear the people yeah. are still, was, we're now picking on other areas. We're, we're celebrating the dollar, yeah. just the dollar. Can you, this one, let us talk about it. Yes, more exports and less importation is the only way to strengthen, to strengthen the Naira. The prices of commodities should be adjusted to after the U.S. dollar don't crash. So talk about prices, guys. It's not, nobody, the federal government, government cannot tell Damila to change her prices. Mm -hmm. Damila will have to want to look at her goods and say, okay, how is it? So it's, it's an individual well, thing. Government yeah. tell, we can tell them. So, so, because mm -hmm. Computer Village was reflecting prices per hour. Like if you want to buy a phone, you mm -hmm. go to Computer Village in the morning and they will tell you by afternoon, ah, dollar is now 1,800. They changed their price. That if I sell this one now, how do I buy another one? Mm -hmm. But why are we not reflecting per hour the prices of items? I know it has come down a bit. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, it's not everywhere that can be immediately, that can implement immediately. But I know that in computer mm -hmm. village, my husband mm -hmm. operates there, IT products have reduced in price based on this. In so let's not, it might not affect those that have imported. Mm -hmm. Let's say BC, BC that imported hair now, that paid that much for importing That's hair. She yeah. can't change her price, her price on just yet. after yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. a new... Yeah. 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 You have to, yeah. you have to yeah. sell off the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sell off the stuff. That's exactly what I said because I have products I bought in one nine. Am I losing... Feeling for you, Nigerians, if mm. you also are, if you're pri if you are selling off old stuff, don't sell it at new dollar new rates. Dollar rate. That's unfair. That's don't sell old stock on new dollar rates. We're going to be wrapping up on this, but yes. I think it's a good thing um, mm. that um, hopefully, indeed, um, the, the policies the government has put in place, we're seeing the results. We're hoping it to be sustained. Uh, we're hoping that they are able to go after the rocketeers, the rocketeers, and you know, and 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 ensure that they don't manipulate and even truncate the process that we're already seeing. Because the truth is that Nigerians will be really happy if the dollar, if the Naira is strengthened. And hopefully that will have a ripple effect on our economy. Jobs will be created. People can now plan properly. Um, and I was even told that many of the goods that were, on, um, that were banned have been lifted because they want everybody to come to the banks for transactions. So mm. before there was certain goods that were They're banned. But now, 
I bring your goods in, but for to go and buy it, come to us, come to the bank, come come through the books. Let us see how you're transacting. And that's why somebody was telling me it was so difficult for him to buy um, because he was trying to import some goods. And it was, he said that he had to go. In fact, they insured the process. He, he was really, really surprised that even that they had they become school all the so yes people were they lamenting were they could not transfer school fees. Mm. But now that you are able to transfer school fees, nobody, nobody is so anyway. TBI. I think the government is paying directly. Yes, yes. Yeah. they're not allowing. They're not giving you the money anymore. Yes. The government is paying for yeah. you. Yes, so that's the process. Mm. And Nigerians don't like process. We like to go to the back door mm. and do it ourselves. Mm. And, and they're not allowing that anymore. Mm. But we have to wrap up. But I think um, what's 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 crucial for us is that. Let's buy Nigeria. Let's wear Nigeria. Even if all the airlines are cheaper, please let us be intentional yeah. about yes. buying Nigerian airlines because we need to, um, to support a Nigerian brand, regardless of all the other issues. We need to go back to that giant of Africa. Giant. When I was flying, when I went to Turkey, everywhere, Turkish airlines, like, what's all this nonsense? Everywhere, Turkish airlines. There's one other airline I was seeing. Like, what's all this nonsense? We, please, uh, we, we, must, can do better. we can do better. Can do Nigerians better. can do better. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we we'll move on to the next segment of our show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Made Kuti <laughs> in the view. <laughs> it's still 7 of 7 and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry placard. It's about 5 of 7 to be honest because Ask your question. I have so much to speak about once we finish. We'll not give you the time because it's seven of seven. I will make the time now. <laughs> he said he will not ask questions about science. No, 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 Compose the music. Editor, scratch this part out. Stupidity <laughs> is an act of ignorance. Hey God, my <laughs> Was composed by which Kuti? Femi Kuti. Is that a part of us? God, I'm sure Kuti. No, wait, wait, Femi Kuti. You said Femi Kuti. Kuti. Wait, wait, wait. You can't be allowed. No, no you've you not can't asked me guess anything. Everyone. You've not asked me anything. We, we, uh, so, my final answer no. <laughs> All I have to say is yeah. this show is really about drinking. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The questions don't matter. <laughs> that's the whole Just idea. Just this is out the window. <laughs> we throw caution to We have no morals right here. On the 7 of 7. <laughs> Just a seven of OJ and signing a severity into my hands tonight on the social experiment called the seven of seven. It's Owen G. What is the name? Or what was the name? You see, I don't I won't make them better now. Rock Heart. No, of That's the of the goats. When they brought it on stage. The name of that goat. Yeah. We should, uh, go, we should go there. No, no, that one, that one, easy now. Uh -huh. I'm just drinking this so that I can ask him my own questions. It's not because of Buga. He didn't get it. You, you know, you, you know. Okay. Mention ten female stand-up comedians in Nigeria. See, just mention their stage name. If you annoy me, you will mention their real names and the year they started. And if you annoy me for that, you mention the names of their husbands and the names of their children. Try me now. Okay, okay. mention their name. No, no, let's, name. Name. let's just. Mm. Uh, no way. Mm. No, don't. No. Even name, real name, stage name, husband name, children name. Ten yeah. of them. Even the ten. That's a lot. Eh? That's a lot. Did I cut your question for you? Yes. When you were happy now, now. Elelele Bugana with your arms back. Elelele Bugana. You are wasting time. We don't have time. See, my brother, hmm? before we go on a commercial break, yeah, you are stubborn. And I told you things. The fact that you play this your hair does not mean. You understand? Know, see this bad hair you are looking at? It's a, experience. I've suffered before you. But I try now. When you there during the military era I have a bacha and a babang. You know what happened? I be Gen Z. <laughs> so that's I, I will move four out of ten. 
That's like four out of ten they pass exam. Come do this thing. Where baby you are on here. Look out! Fire land. Thanks for staying with us. So Eid Mubarak to all our Muslim faithfuls. We're going to be showing some live pictures from Dutton Barracks where uh, our president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, will be performing the prayer that marks the end of the Ramadan. We're going to be taking some pictures here now from Dutton Barracks as our president. Uh, I can see the deputy governor of uh, Lagos State, Dr. Um, Hamzat, also there. And uh, quite a number of government officials will be there performing the prayers at Dodon Barracks. So, um, you can see the former governor of Lagos State, uh, Mr. Fashola, Vatindi Raji Fashola is also there, amongst many others. Uh, Mr. Oyetola, that's the governor, former governor of Oshun State. Uh, Oyetola there. And quite a number of others. We have... Um, other dignitaries there, all performing the final prayers to mark the end of Ramadan and celebration to all our Muslim brothers and sisters across the world, and spe especially to those on your view, uh, Nima, Akasha Tibiri, she's probably also on the prayer ground somewhere in Lagos right now, um, to all our other sisters here, Ramat and Muyo. They are all also going to be praying today. So we're grateful to God for the 30 days of fasting of all our Muslim faithfuls, and we pray that the blessings of this season will abide with them and their families. Amen. Okay, so coming back to the studio now, um, we'd like to take in some calls to celebrate those of you who are celebrating. I know many of them are actually still praying. Others have left the praying ground. Mm -hmm. But it's been nice to celebrate the Eid with our Muslim faithfuls across the country. You can call us on 081-0764-1679-090-241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVZ Connect. Those of you who are not Muslims, how are you celebrating the Eid today? Uh, what, are you, what are your plans today, taking the children out? What plans do you have for today? Share with us. would like to hear your own thoughts. Um, let me start with you, Dami. I think basically for the celebration, um, unity is very important. Peace is more important because when there is peace, there will be unity. A lot of us do not practice what we preach. Mm. Um, I think a few days back I was on the um, Intellectual Disability Conference and I spoke heavily on empathy. You don't know what the other person is going through. But we are quick to face religion. When it's time for Ramadan, we are like, ah, I want to be holy this period. After Ramadan, what next? After Easter, what next? Do you go back to your old self of being the peevish kind of person? Do you go back to your old self of being the wayward kind of person? So some of this religion teaches us how to live an exemplary life. But it just feels to me that Nigeria just come holy during that season. I think that the Ramadan is not even as, as though as popular as the Lent for the Christians. We don't have so much attention on the Lent. In fact, sometimes you, if you don't see Ash Wednesday on people, you don't even know that yeah. Lent is going on. Yeah. On like how they've heavily invested on the teachings of Ramadan for even children, like um, TMO said, even children who have, they've been indoctrinated to know how to fast. So these things and the tenets of our religion, we know what it teaches us individually, either Christianity, um, traditionalist, or even Islam. But yeah. it is good that we always abide by the teachings of our religion. Yeah. If we so claim that we are religious in nature, let it reflect in our attitude during whatever season and beyond. Um, I, I just feel that um, the conversation around Ramadan is not a conversation that we can just because there's a lot of things a good good things that happened amaka highlighted the fact that there's a lot of food given but it is very sacrificial and i think that um it is something that we would all discuss from the perspective of this sacrifice that we're sacrificing to ensure that our hungry brothers and sisters do not continue to go to bed hungry 
we are able to sustain it. When you, um, and also the, the what, what I was in Dubai during the fasting period, it is there you realize that Nigerian, Nigerian Muslims are very hard working. No? Ha. Nigerian Muslims would be fasting and they would walk through the entire period. In, the, in Dubai, they will shut down at 11 in the morning and they will resume until after, they, like they will close their shops and fasting. They close shops at 12 and then they will resume after they have broken fast. Yes. So, because they felt like this is really um, exerting to be working all through the yeah. day when you're not eating mm. and you can't drink water no. as well. Yeah. So, I think that we should applaud um, those who have sus sustained the fasting from beginning to, to the end. end. You know, there was a video that Mariam sent, I'll come to you, Amaka. Mm. There was a video that Mariam sent into the group that was um, Christians in UAE mm -hmm. opening up their churches for iftar. Mm. Which I thought was very instructive mm -hmm. of the unity that Dami talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Because we don't see a lot of that happening here. Mm. We are un as a united people, the truth is that even the Christians during this season, it would have been very remarkable mm. if churches open up in the evenings for Muslims to have in the neighborhood to come and have somewhere to break their fast for their iftar or to even pray. Because there are some people that will be praying outside on the streets. Because they need, there's no space in the mosques. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the unity that we must be seeing as a nation because we must also use this opportunity as an opportunity to, uh, this season as an opportunity to remind ourselves of how we are as a people. We are one. But politicians use religion to divide us. But we, the people, must be able to direct ourselves. And you know what? We must be united as, 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 as religious human and Nigerians in this country. What are your thoughts on, on okay, this? So, so let me come back to what you said um, about unity. Like a friend of mine, he's, he's Christian, mm. right? So he sent me some money and I added my own money to be able to feed um, people, the yeah. Muslims, during this their fasting period. Yeah. Do you understand? That was a very remarkable thing. Wow. He's, he's Christian. But then, you know, he felt like that they, um, they need food, they need stuff you know, to support, not yeah. just the Christians, but Muslims. And yeah. then that's, that's also unity. And then back to also what she said about feeding, you know, sacrificial feeding during and giving during the the fasting period. period you know but it's one thing to is is important to be sacrificial but it's, it's also important to give within you know most times people, yeah yeah most times people want people to see that they are giving sure. outside but then mm. they're not taking care of what is inside like inside. i have a friend she's christian but she's with a muslim and she was complaining to me bitterly like that see there's so many bills that needed to be paid this period <laughs> Twenty things that, that they needed to do but well, this person is not even asking or sorting out the issue. Mm, charity begins at charity home. Charity begins at home. But instead, he's busy trying to say, oh, I'm feeding 200 people this season. Eh. Like it's something of like a bragging thing. Oh, I'm doing yeah. this, I'm doing that. So no, but I think where do we the, draw the in line? In religion, mm. there are specific instructions that you must do mm. during the during season. This season. So, so it's not, it's not, it might not be because he wants to brag. Mm. Because he's trying to follow the tenets of Islam that says you have to give out certain, certain things. I, I, I think, I think the, the people are coming, they're hungry. No, no, no. The little I know about it is that there is... Uh, um, there's an attributed blessing during Ramadan when you feed people. Okay. And most times, even for those that cannot fast, mm. because I, I think uh, um, having to be a broadcaster and having Muslims around me, my partner, his father, my children, they have Muslim names mm. and all of that. So I learn. And I understand that during this season, it is particular, even if you are not fasting, mm. it is uh, I'm accrued of you to feed those who are fasting to get at, at least the exact amount of blessing mm. as though you were fasting. Right. So some things, some, like Mariah said, some things is the tenant. He doesn't want to lose out in that blessing. Mm. But also, we have to look inward. Yeah. Like you said, there's no accolade for the person that is doing outside exactly. that his house is leaking yeah. and you're patching other people's yeah. roof. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I, think, I, think, I think it's really instructive and I also want to use the opportunity to celebrate Nima the yeah. new show she hey. said this year, if start with Nima was fabulous. That's you right. know, she Congratulations. Really, Congratulations. Nima was, and then um, uh, Elijah Doja, Ade Doja, yeah. with uh, Mr. Musa, Lukma Musa was the producer and best man. All the four of them was a four man crew mm -hmm. and they were able to come together and back to back every single day. And the reason why mm -hmm. that show was created was because we felt that mm -hmm. a lot of Nigerians don't, we don't, we as Nigerians, we don't know each other. We don't, we don't know, Christians don't know Muslims, Muslims don't know Christians. And we, this, there was an opportunity for Christians to learn about Islam, to understand what is being done, the rituals during the season of Ramadan, the, all the various um, 
um, um, sacrifices that had to be made, the various tenets of the, of the religion. Of religion. And that was what Nima focused on. And she also visited many people to break, their, break the uh, fast with fast. them. She had a with different families, got to talk to them, understand them, know them. It was a wonderful program. I'm really happy she was able to do it successfully. And I'm hoping that next year will be better. But and it was a really, stretch for it her. Was a stretch. It was growth so, for her. As in, for me, I know Nima. Uh, Nima doesn't joke with this season. Nima's Ramadan is family time. Yeah. There's a lot of family responsibility. It was a huge sacrifice. And for me, I like the fact that you're celebrating the, what it cost her and the entire team to put it together. Because doing this, Muslims should extol it even much more. Because she's seeking to, to democratize the knowledge that you people, some people have. A lot, some people, I've, I've, I've learned a lot about Islam from being around Nima to realize that a lot, a lot of other Muslims I knew did not knew, and they, they, they were just they were just Muslims practicing, religion, practicing, practicing the religion. They don't really understand it. And um, I've watched a few of the episodes. It was very educational. Mm -hmm. it, it gave you an understanding of what is going on behind the scene. And really, well, I, I, I wanted to demystify Islam mm. to Nigerians. Now listen, we are to, we are all Nigerians, mm. and we must also respect and um, respect each other's choices, mm. religious like choices. First Nigerians and it's personal. Became religion. Mm. And everybody is personal. Your religion is personal to you. Mm -hmm. you, shouldn't, you shouldn't determine how I treat you or how I judge you. you. It's your personal decision. We must have conversations based on our capabilities and abilities to socialize, not based on our religious Religion. choices. Mm -hmm. Let me take this call. We're going to be wrapping up on this. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Aramide from London. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. 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 Welcome. Hello. Hello. First time caller from London. Yes, we just clapped for you. Go ahead. Hello? Hello. We can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I really appreciate this topic to, you are taking, uh, taking on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. How, are, how is everybody? They are well. I'm sure Lima is not, Lima is not there. We will not be here today. She's Thank nice. you very much. Yes, thank you. Okay, we're hoping to get more calls from Muslims yeah. celebrating. Uh, I'm sure Aramide is a Muslim. Maybe that's why she's just mm -hmm. grateful that we're celebrating. But it was important for us to bring it up today yeah. because the idea really is to celebrate. And I really hope this time next year we can talk about a church opening up its doors and also mosque open up their doors mm. for religious i'm sure yeah. it already yeah. happens in some parts of the yeah. world in of, of nigeria. Yeah. nigeria it might not lagos. be it might not be lagos not there are many i've seen before where um some people some muslims were praying in a church open ground because the church had open ground and i, I think it went, it's it was around the it was in the southwest, but the video went out. It wasn't even about Ramadan. So I believe that this is already happening. But maybe we should talk more about it and not make it look like it is... is yeah, if, if, we, if we really look at it, like in the denomination where I worship as a Sianis, we have a lot of Muslims converted. Either way, you like it. You have, yes, you have a lot of um, Sadiq, you have a lot of Hamzad, mm -hmm. you have a lot of Muslim names amongst us. Yeah. So I also think that because religion, we have to be we are first persons before we learn the religion. Mm -hmm. So the humanity aspect of it should not be taken away because of religion. Mm. Look at, for instance, what happened in Elori a few years back about the traditional worshippers clashing with we are first yeah. human beings. Yeah. It wasn't necessary. To me, too, it wasn't necessary. Just let everybody their space to practice their religion. So far, it's not an hindrance to you yourself. That's the only way you can excuse yourself and say, okay, I'm not part of this. But we first before religion or before tribe. Humanity. Right, we have to Humanity. Humanity. This, but I think, yeah, Mama, can you find out to ask her, like, what's CNS? Oh, so Sarah Sarah and Seraphim. Okay, oh, the white, white garment church, oh, which is different from Celestia. Okay, okay. It is? Yes, it is different from Celestia Church of yeah, Christ. No. Uh, we are CNS, it's different from Celestia. We are Because we like wear white shoes. garments. Like we wear slippers. Yes. When we get to the church, yeah. we take off our slippers. Celeste don't wear slippers at, at all. all. Once they are wearing the white garments. And then, so guess, guess the what? I, I was part of people that never used to understand why CNS. They used to take off their shoes. CNS. <laughs> why they used to take off their, the shoes? Uh, so, recently, there's a movie um, that, that, that premiered on a... Okay. Uh, Netflix about the, the Testament the book of Moses mm. and then it was while watching that movie Holy Commandments that, 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 that really really dawned on me that oh this is yes, wow. the holy ground yes, it's the holy ground and that's why most people so the commandment of removal so really, and and like so knowledge. 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 knowledge is power knowledge is power that's so why people. Peter with Nima's show was really important because once you understand yes. wow. I remember there was a pastor I would never forget mm. I would never forget there was a pastor that was preaching on the pulpit many many years ago mm. And he was saying that 
the fact that the Muslims kill ram, mm. that the, that ram is ritual. You should not eat it. Mm. That it is a ritual. They, they, they are, they are, they are, and what they are saying, they are, they are doing some incantations mm. before they kill the ram. And I remember that sermon. Mm. And then I was very, very foolish. Yeah, yeah. I, was, for me, I, I was from a Muslim background, so I knew it was not rituals. Mm. I knew I, I was very clear because He's I know what it was. Mm. So when this man was on the program, people were like, ah, really? And I, was, and I said, I'm going to my family house to go and eat. They say, ah, I was going to eat rituals. Ram. It's just lack of information. Lack of information. Yes. Lack of That's knowledge. why it is important. There are people that are still thinking that way. Mm -hmm. Because what is being said is prayers. It's just like it's in Arabic. It's and in Arabic. Own and brain. Arabic is a language. It's a language. So, but in their own it's brain, it is ritual. Yeah, right. Lack of understanding. Yeah. So that's why it's important that we have these shows mm. to re-educate, reorientate, so that we understand. Exactly. Box and you make your choices own space. Go based out. on your understanding. Exactly. Absolutely. Which was very, very good. So I'm really happy. Congratulations to the entire team for this. Mm. And congratulations to the Muslim community for the completion of their fasting. And we're hoping... That Lent too. I know that Lent is also ongoing. No, and the no. Uh, no, Lent is aware. Well, God, we've done Easter. <laughs> you, you traveled. So you're not my brain. You're not Christian. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Christian. <laughs> no, she's not Christian now. So that I'm not. Uh, I'm Christian. not orthodox. That's what I said because <laughs> not, the popularization not, of Lent is I'm not, not as much as Sorry. Ramadan. I know that that's why we have Easter. You see, my brain was not calculating mm -hmm. the whole thing. My speech and the brain were not communicating. But then we go in a short break. We come back. We bring in our special guest. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Paris, Paris, Paris. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be... Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good, I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, have you? Yeah. It was great. Okay. Yeah, thank we, you. We, we, thank we try you. like that. Thank you, thank you. Now my question... Which I feel is a cheap question. Well, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. Uh, no, you're joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. Kelechi <laughs> Amadi. No. <laughs> Shay, you didn't whine me. me. <laughs> you whine me now. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is, that's very easy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, it's, out there. it's supposed to be. Yeah. I just said, let me take a give you this one as a token of my appreciation. Sony. Drink! No, 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 I'm not done, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. You did not say final answer. It's final answer. You did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you. Yeah, Michael. How many, how many cameras do they have? Michael. I went to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Michael now. Water is essential for life, yet millions around the world still lack access to clean and safe water. World Water Day serves as a reminder for the importance of water conservation, access and sustainability. Every Drop Count aims to raise awareness and inspire action towards ensuring a sustainable water future for all. Join in promoting peace through this water campaign, because when we safeguard water, we sow the seeds of peace for generations to come. This is not just a campaign, it's a call to action for individuals, communities and policymakers to recognize the importance of water conservation and equitable access to clean water. I mean, water can be an instrument for so many things. Water can be a weapon. Uh, sometimes water can also be a trigger. And lastly, most importantly, water can be an instrument for peace. Boiling of water is the safest, easiest and fastest route to getting clean, portable water. It is said that three out of every ten Nigerians do not have access to clean, portable water. As a doctor, there are a host of diseases that could be transmitted via use of unsafe water. Some of the diseases commonly, in fact, is a diarrhea. There are some others, such as schistosomiasis. 
it can cause uh, quite some very serious health um, challenges and in the long run it could even cause things like bladder cancer, trachomatis, we could lead to blindness. Can you imagine that just from unsafe water? At TVC Communications, we know that by working together, we can ensure a sustainable water future for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Made Kuti <laughs> in the view. <laughs> it's still 707 and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry placard. It's about five or seven to be honest because, ask your question, I have so much to speak about once we finish. We will not give you the time because it's seven of seven. I will make the time now. <laughs> he said he will not ask questions about science. No, 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 He asked a question that was subjective <laughs> about high life and he did not finalize his answer about a kuti question where there are only three of us. Editor, scratch this part out. That could out. have possibly <laughs> composed the music. Editor, scratch this part out. Stupidity <laughs> is an act of ignorance. Oh hey God, my day. Was composed. By which Kuti? Femi Kuti. Is that your father? Oh God. I'm Shimon Kuti. No, wait. Wait, Femi Kuti. You said Femi Kuti. Kuti. Wait, wait, wait. You can't be allowed. No, no you've you not asked me anything. Everyone. You've not asked me anything. We, we, uh, so, my final answer no. <laughs> All I have to say is yeah. this show is really about drinking. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The questions don't matter. <laughs> That's the whole Justice idea. Justice is out the window. <laughs> we throw caution to We have no right morals here. here. On the 7 of 7. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. La General, the one and only Pere Egui. Which of the following is false about teeth? Read, read we are again. born with 20 primary teeth. Teeth are the hardest substance in the body. Teeth are the strongest bones in the body. Teeth is not a bone, actually. Teeth, uh, teeth uh, can self-repair. The strongest bone in the body. Thanks for staying with us. As many of you know, Wednesdays we love to celebrate women across the world doing great things, Nigerian women, spe women specifically. And today we have with us a highly accomplished international keynote speaker, business analyst, and consultant based in Calgary, Alberta, who has made significant contributions in helping professionals and immigrants kickstart their careers. With more than 100,000 professionals from over 90 countries benefiting from her career coaching and keynote speaking, She's widely recognized as an award-winning career coach. Welcome with us, Enno Eka, to the show. Thank you. Thank you so Good much. Good to have you. Thank you so much, Mariah. So you live in Canada. I do. I am all Canada. the way here in Nigeria. Yes. Visiting, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I am visiting, yeah. and then I'm, I'm also hosting the training this week. Yeah. So, yes. So what, 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 what we do on your view, once in a while, especially maybe once a month or twice a month, we try to bring in women who are doing great things, mm. um, just to celebrate them, mm. um, and we feature them on, on Wednesdays. Mm. And you are our feature today, and uh, we'd like to learn a bit about you, your career, how you started, mm -hmm. mostly how you landed in Canada, <laughs> you know, the jackpot moves, but give us, give us a summary of your career uh, foundation and where you are today. Sure. Uh, so I, I guess I'll start from start the scratch, which was I studied accounting. Even though my parents wanted me to study medicine, I studied accounting. But just like where? University of Benin. Uh -huh, see, Nigeria, <laughs> Nigeria, Nigeria, go, ahead. go ahead. But just like everyone else um, who studied something and then you get into that career path. Mm. And I just, I wanted something more. And so I started researching careers and I found business analysis. So I was like, okay, this is the career path for me. So I started doing trainings. I had to go to Ghana to write the exam. I started the career here. Then one of my friends told me about Canada. So I applied. And then in one month, I got the visa. Wow. And I was able to relocate to Canada to continue my career there. So 
that's how we started. But when I got to Canada, that's when things really like blew up for me. Mm. Because it's a highly, highly in-demand skill set there. So in like six months, I landed multiple six-figure jobs. Wow. And the Nigerian community is so small. Like everybody knows. And so yeah. people are like, how are you doing it? Like we've been here since and we're working like security right. jobs. How did you do it? And so we put together WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, and that's really how, <laughs> yeah, so that's really how it all started. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. For me, I'd like to know because um, I tell people that my definition of success is opportunity meets preparation. Exactly. You have to own the two. Yeah. But the way you said after your training in Ghana, it took you one month to get visa. Mm. That one month feels like, oh, it's it sugar and honey. Sure. It was, <laughs> oh, was no, very short. No. <laughs> what were the tenants? What did you yeah. put in to achieve that one month lapse when some people are trying to achieve it over six years or more than? Oh, for sure. So for me, is I invested in a lot of courses, trainings. I got mentors um, who would guide me. And it took me about six months to get certified. Um, it takes mm. a bit shorter time now, but me moving from a career in accounting and there weren't a lot of resources back then, it took me way longer to achieve that. So about six months to get certified. Wow. And even at that time, it wasn't such a popular career path yeah. in Nigeria. People were saying, what are you doing? Go do your ICANN or your ACCA, like you're an accountant, you know? But I'm like, okay, this is a, is, it was more of a futuristic thing for me. Like, okay. you know, in the next five, ten years, this is going to be a booming career path. So I want to be one of the first people to get yes, there. To get so. And when, even when Canada came, I got my visa in one month, my PR, but I didn't leave until a year after. Oh. <laughs> so I planned that. So I was wow. looking at job descriptions, connecting with recruiters, hiring managers, nice. talking to people. So you're quite intentional. Oh, yes. Intentional. You didn't just carry your bag and go. No, I did oh, not. Nice. I, I got there like three days before my visa expired. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> that's that's so I new. I took my time and I planned. And I tell people all the time, no matter where you're going to, UK, US, Canada, prepare, like you said. Prepare, be intentional. Yes, be intentional. And so when I arrived, the next day I had interviews, like it was interviews back to back. Two weeks in, I got my first job. Oh, wow. Okay. Fabulous. Fabulous. So, so the, the career coaching, is it just for people in Canada or does it spread across? If you're in Nigeria, if you're in America, everywhere. Is it just for specifically for people in Canada? No, it's global. So we have clients in, you know, from Asia to America to Nigeria. We have a school here in Nigeria. Oh. Like Moira was asking me, I'm actually here for our business analysis school conference here in Lagos. So oh, okay. we are based here in Nigeria and we help a lot of Nigerians too because it's a thriving career path here as well. Ah, nice. So I, w I want to go back to your story, yeah. especially highlighting your, st your um, pr preparation. Yeah. Because in, uh, we, we spiritualize everything and we pray for miracle mm. and we're not taking cognizance of the timeline of preparedness. Yeah. Yes. And in your, in your job, in your, in your career path and in your coaching yeah. path, what do you think many Nigerians overlook as they pray for career growth as opposed to prepare mm. for career growth? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things people overlook is their, is their soft skills mm. and their transferable mm. skills. A lot of times we feel like we need to get a new degree, we need to get another master's, another MBA. You mean the average Nigerian abroad, they have three degrees, degrees. but they're, you know, they're working flipping burgers. Mm -hmm. So we always feel like we need to get more education, we need to pass and pay. <laughs> But we can leverage the skills that we already have. We can also get mentorship. We can get coaching. Um, we can also take courses that can help us to upskill. Those are things that we miss. And then we should also... What is soft skill? Can you... So not everybody would know what you mean by soft skills. Yeah. So soft skills are like your communication skills, um, your ability to lead and influence, um, you know, your empathy. Emotional intelligence. Empathy, emotional intelligence. These are actually skills that play across all... So while you're trying to get the hard skills, like learning new tools, getting new degrees, focusing on those things are key because those are the things I learned when I moved to Canada that, oh, they focus more on the soft skills. Like you go into an interview and they're, ask, they're not asking you about like the job. They're asking you like, how would you challenge your manager, you know, if they yeah. said something that was wrong? How would you, you know, talk to a customer? who, you know, is upset, you know, an Irish how customer? How do you relate with yeah, your so those colleague. are the kind of questions yeah. they're asking. Yeah. And then as you're answering those questions, they're picking like, okay, what are the skill sets that he or she has? So those are some things that mm. we want to do. And then also not trying to copy other people, right? Like Being know your authenticity. Mm. Yes, know your path and follow your path. Focus on your own skills and your strengths. That's what's going to work for Just you. Just to brushes what you're saying, I know, I know somebody was telling me that um, her daughter got um, an interview for an Ivy League in the U.S. Mm. And 
they came with all the all her qualifications, her, her grades, her GPAs, and all the questions are around community service you've done, mm -hmm. the track record and stuff like your ability to engage people, yes. the leadership skills. So you're right, a lot of people now are focusing more on soft skills. But I wanna, I've always I've always had this theory in my head. Yeah. The Nigerians who have their first degree here mm. turn off so much better when they go abroad. I always have that theory in my head because they are more focused. Could you give me you could you tell me if indeed it helped you, you having your first degree, having matured in Nigeria gave you some kind of a focus when you yes. were able to travel abroad? Or do you think it's just Somebody just speculating. You're actually right <laughs> because I moved by myself. I, I didn't have any family there. And so I had to quickly find a job and all of that. So I prepared. And then when I got there, I had to study mm -hmm. and understand what companies are looking for. And so because of the Nigerian factor, I'm used to preparing for, you know, harder exams. So it was easier to pass a lot of the exams. Mm -hmm. It would take me like a week to prepare for a certification and I would get it. <laughs> you know, I'm used to studying, you know, staying up at night, doing that, a lot of that research work. So it definitely really helped. And then that resilience that we have as Nigerians, we're so resilient. And Tough. that's something that we need to also tap into and be able to tell our stories in a way that it resonates with these people. Wow. A lot of times we say, oh, there's that bias. And that's just because we're not educating them. Mm. You go into an interview and they don't know, you know any of the banks or the mm. telcos here. Well, you can tell them how big they are, mm. their asset yeah. size, you know, you know, the, the size of the company, those kind of things. And like, wow, mm. ah, I didn't know, know that. we have Nigeria. banks in Nigeria, in Nigeria with you know, over 200 branches. Hey. Like, for example, my first interview, uh, which was my first six-figure job, it was a financial technology company. And I was going to be working with, um, on a project that was a merger of five credit unions. So credit unions are like the microfinance banks that we have here. And I said, I'm coming from a commercial and retail bank, and we have over 200 branches. They're like, seriously? I'm like, yes. Yeah. That's my experience from Nigeria. Like, wow. Yeah. These companies you're going to work with, they have like five, six branches. So this would be a piece <laughs> of cake for you. And I talked about the valuation, the kind of softwares we use. So we need to also educate them to so let them know that, look, we are not coming from the village. We are not coming from the city or the jungle. Yeah. We Thank have to you. do better, mm. you know, in educating these people and telling them more about that. Like when I come to work, I bring my eba and my gusti. And they're like, oh, are those like, um, you know, bonds? Like, yeah, they're called Gary bonds. <laughs> you know, educate them. Tell them about our culture yeah. and what we do and who we are. Like yeah. we have to do that. And in those interviews... Show your authenticity and share your story in a way that resonates. Okay, so in having done, um, done this for a couple of years now, um, can you tell us um, the three to five thriving sectors that you think people should really key into or the three to five sectors that people are actually getting jobs in? That's a fantastic question. <laughs> <laughs> so the top uh, three, I'll say top five. Mm. The first is banking, finance, and insurance. These industries always hire business analysts. They are innovative. There's a lot of projects mm. going on there. The, the second is government. The government actually hires a lot of business analysts, mm. product managers, project managers. And then also the third is healthcare. So healthcare, um, because there's a lot of processes involved, they lot, hire a lot of process analysts. Mm. And then we have consulting. And then we also have retail and e-commerce. Mm, right. Fantastic. You yeah. have them on your fingertips. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, does. so do, you, do you have a social life? Do you, do you, do you, because people see you as an ethical, you, I mean, <laughs> all the things you just said right now, this girl doesn't, she just, he told her she's a very, very focused very person. Very serious. Very serious. Yeah. Do you go out, do you party, do you have a life in Canada? I do have a social, I'm not social, uh, a social bird, but I do have a social life. I do. So I love music. Uh, so I could go to like a lounge, I go to parties um, and all of that. Um, I know I go to church, so I have that. I have a good social life. life. And there's a lot of life in Canada. Like Nigerians are there, there's Oambes, there's parties, like so much fun. So much there's fun. There's an assumption okay. that people are so far away, far apart that you don't, there's, they there's lose no connection. time. You no, know, they, they, they lose connection. There's no parts to you. There's no opportunity to really inter integrate. But you're saying that Nigerians are together. We are. We are. I'm, I'm in a couple of WhatsApp groups with Nigerians. And trust me when I tell you that there's always something happening. Summer is coming and I tell you that it's going to be back to back to back. Yoruba day, Igbo day, <laughs> Pie bomb day. We have all of that. Right. Okay, let's go to wins. Women in need society. Yeah. How did you come about wins? What are the wins of wins? <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on? Okay, so women in need society is a non-profit that I am affiliated with, and they support women uh, who have suffered domestic violence and are displaced, and I support them by providing them with um, funding and um, training as they need. Uh, so that's one of my charitable. Our organizations that I am focused on supporting. 
Yeah. Okay, so um, your Instagram page calls you Miss Pr Pragmatic. Yes. Um, and for me, I always feel like relationship, re, that, that is a miss part I'm going to, don't mind me. <laughs> because many people go into diaspora, and we're talking, mm. we talking to many Nigerians whose aspiration mm. is to leave Nigeria. Yeah. And they're wondering how would relationship fare over there? What would, how would you describe um, human communication relating? I know you, you mentioned it, that there are parties and all of that, but people feel lonely when they go. Is that, mm. Are there things you can do to prepare yourself mentally for the change in yeah. what will happen over there, especially with relationships? Yeah. Um, I think one thing for me was before I got there, I started building friendships, networking. So I would oh, go on LinkedIn. Really mm. <laughs> Very intentional. <laughs> like I'll go on LinkedIn and I'll search for, filter for like Nigerians who are already in Canada and I'll look for people who had the same career path like oh, I did. Wow. So see, because I worked in banking, so I would look for people who had mutual connections, I'll reach out to them, I'll ask for an introduction. Mm -hmm. And you know, take it off to WhatsApp, and then wow. continue that you know that relationship oh, there. Mm -hmm. So doing that, and then even with the local church too as well, you know, volunteer, um, you know, show that support as well. So those are ways that um, you know you can you know keep that up. Join the WhatsApp groups, and then just show support. Like for me, in those groups, I became very popular by sharing job opportunities. Like mm -hmm. talk to this recruiter. There's this opportunity here. If you need help with a job interview prep, you know, give me a call. I'm available. So those ways. You can also support social support to people, and then they will also help you when you need it. Oh, so okay. um, I know you also talk to or you work with non-Nigerians. Yeah. So if you want to like give some kind of an analysis of um, how how better are they equipped than us in, mm. this, in this kind of getting jobs? Um, are there things they know that we don't, or are we even more equipped than they are? I mean, especially when you want to compare non-Nigerians from, from Asia, parts of the world. Do you think they have something better than us, or do you think we are we're faring well? As you guys I think we're definitely doing well. And like I said, now we don't really leverage that. So I'll give an example. For a typical Nigerian who moves abroad and is trying to get into a career path. So here, we, you wear multiple hats. Like your, your title can be associate. It can be, you know, marketing. It could be anything. But you're wearing multiple hats. And that gives you an opportunity to apply for multiple positions. And you can speak to different aspects of that industry. Mm. So, you know, we have that opportunity. And we're able to leverage that as Nigerians. The fact that... We wear multiple hats and we know that, you know, sometimes we're doing more than our job descriptions. Mm -hmm. But that gives us that opportunity and, you know, our resilience too as well. In fact, to be honest, a lot of the hiring managers I work with, when they have opportunities, they reach out to me. They love working with Nigerians. We're very hardworking. <laughs> and they see that. They see our commitment to work. And so that work ethic that we have here, we take it on and we excel in our roles, we see Nigerians growing really fast in corporate America and Canada. Okay, so I can see how ad well adept you are mm -hmm. in speaking in front of the camera, and I yes. can see that you have a live stream and podcast chat. Yeah. So what's that about, and how has that been going? Yeah. So I have a fireside chat with Enor. It's a podcast where I talk about issues related to careers, uh, business, and I invite guests to come speak to as well. And so doing that podcast has helped me to get a lot of media features as well in Canada, the US and also here and I'm you know I'm really happy to be here. Ah, Thank you. Lovely. I mean I think I think I think learning from you today has been mm -hmm. really interesting. <laughs> I can see how you're able to impact people. people. Um my producer is asking me to say if you're eligible. I think he's trying to marry you or something. <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, is she available? Oh, oh my god. He's asking. <laughs> so she he wants to know. I produce I've asked for you. Um well Eno is single. Oh so, <laughs> okay. single and searching or single and not searching. Yeah, different so level. Yeah, different, uh, different levels. Uh, 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 we see somebody or single <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> in Canada. You want a Nigerian. Are you looking for a Nigerian or no? I would definitely love to be with a Nigerian. I, I love Nigeria. I love the culture. Yeah. I would definitely love to be with a Nigerian for sure. Oh, good. Yeah. Producer, you have a chance. <laughs> any, any, tri any tribe, a specific tribe in mind? Started with this tribe. Uh, I just want to ask. Uh -uh, wait, see. Tribe. We can do everything. No, no, wait. I'll let her answer. Uh, <laughs> a specific tribe in mind. I don't have a specific tribe, hey, actually. Let him just be nice. Nigerians in the yeah. don't have tribe. Now I was waiting for Nigeria to find tribal. <laughs> they have they blended. They, they just want, want a good man. Someone, someone, someone just made sure. a comment on, uh, in, um, comment on yeah. YouTube saying that data analyst field is oversaturated and they're not getting top money. Mm. Is that true? So that's a good question. So what I'm seeing right now is that data analysis has become very niche. And so if you have a data analysis skill, you want to get more skills like AI and quality. So we're seeing more data quality assurance analysts, AI data analysts. So you can't just leverage on data analysis right now because of AI. 
have oh, to find a niche. Yes. Something yes. Else to that's, that's good yes. to know. Yeah. So how often do you do your training so that people can actually come to you? Yeah, so we have virtual classes every month. So we have classes every month. We certify people in business analysis. They get practical training, career coaching. And then we do this live conference once a year. Do you help them to jack while you just do the tra training and leave me? Do you help them with the processing of moving, moving to Canada? Um, no, we, I don't help them because I'm not a licensed immigration consultant. However, um, a lot of the people who join our programs are looking to immigrate most of the time. So they want to get those skills. And because I always tell them, prepare, prepare, prepare. Don't do that. Oh, let me go there and just rough it. it out, yeah. And then you start complaining. So a lot of people are now taking the time to join those coaching programs because they're three months to six month programs. Part of your profile also reads that um, you're a campaign ambassador for the United Nations and the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Yeah. Refugees. Yeah. Can we categorically say that we have higher number of refugees abroad <laughs> looking for a place to, I mean, mm. put their head? Mm. How did you become a campaign ambassador for that particular yeah. Um, office. Yes, yeah, so that campaign was uh, to support um, immigrants abroad and it was for people who are immigrants and refugees and I was selected as one of the successful people who have relocated to Canada mm -hmm. and just to show that even though people don't come from here, they can still become something. Mm -hmm. And we do have a high number of refugees, especially from um, you know, African countries where they are, they are war torn. And, you know, telling people that even though they are uh, refugees, they, some of them still have, you know, skills and can be hired in companies. Mm. So advocating for them is something that I enjoy doing as mm. a campaign ambassador for the UN. Oh. You know, we have these horror stories from abroad. Oh, mm. they're sleeping under the bridge. Mm. They are they're they're freezing. Yeah. You know, those things really exist. They just, they just made up stories. Um, they do exist for sure. They do exist for sure. And that's because the shelter sometimes, uh, you know, are full. And then with the Ukraine war... Um, you know, that really, you know, took things. But I think Canada really does a really good job in supporting uh, refugees. Uh, but I really tell our people, like, if you're already a professional, like, you don't need to go that route. Like, just leverage your skills and experience. Apply for the skilled worker visa if you want to, um, you know, to leave unless you truly have that need so that you can give people the who needed the opportunity to be in the shelters. Mm. That's great. Oh, fantastic. So, I think, yeah, go ahead. I, I just, I, I just feel, comments on social yes, media. Let, let me, I feel that you've added so much value to yourself and you're paying it forward and mm. you, I don't know how young you are, but like, it's just so amazing that it, some people are still thinking that they, they can't figure it out. So, um, would you say that, would you attribute your level of self-development to parenting or would you just say, I don't, please don't say it's God. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's God, but like, where, where, would you, was it your parents, yeah. was it aunties, was it, did you have mentors right from when you were growing up, or mm. how did this happen, to, how did you become this person? Mm. I'll definitely say parenting for sure. Um, so I grew up in a household where it was normal to discuss, um, you know, current affairs and politics, and my dad would give like an award for whoever, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, answered the, uh, yes. the, the questions correctly. He would have Punch and Guardian and all of that delivered to the house, and you're supposed to, like, read it. And we discussed that at dinner. Uh, we would watch, you know, NTA, Franco Lise, and all of that. So it was a, sort of a family thing to be well-informed. And I also come from a family of ethicals. So there's so many yeah, doctors, <laughs> medical doctors, PhDs, and all of that. So you just know that, okay, there's definitely, you know, something that I have to live up to. I do enjoy studying, I do enjoy education. I believe that education is power, knowledge is power. Yeah. And so I'm always trying to improve myself. Any comments on social media for you? Um, yeah. All, all, all I'm seeing here is that she's fine, Sha. Oh my ah, God. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, this girl is fine. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> was yabbing yeah, Nigerian companies. Canada. <laughs> so Nigerians wants to hire a business analyst turn data analyst of five or data analyst of five years experience with 120,000 naira oh. salary. It's still six figures. 126 <laughs> figures. Please. Um, another person said, this woman Sabi gone. She has a, she's positive. Oh. Um, <laughs> Then we got comments on, oh, okay, sorry. Most of the comments are talking about Nigeria and they are not so, so nice. <laughs> Times Media said soft skills also include being able to work in a multicultural environment, exactly. which Japa people lack. Talking and about so soft, annoying. Soft, soft skills, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. talking about race issues, yeah. about racism. Mm -hmm. Did you ever encounter that living in Canada and how did you manage it? So um, I would say it was more... I would say if it was, I would say maybe it's unconscious or ignorance because right. when I go into interviews and I'm speaking, like you speak so well, how, how do you speak 
you know, English so well. Mm -hmm. And then I see that as a teaching moment to tell them. <laughs> And our lingua franca is English language, right? We were colonized by the British, like we mm. speak English, English, like that's our official language. Mm. Um, and then I pull up my phone and I show them things on the internet and they're like, oh, I never knew that. So it's always a teaching moment and I always experience that. And I always found I was always the only black person in a lot of these companies. So I took it upon myself to educate them. So it's always unconscious because the truth is a lot of them haven't probably even left the country. They don't really know so much <laughs> about Africa. Um, so those were some things that, you know, I experienced. And sometimes you would say some things and like, oh, you know that? I'm like, yes, we have TV. Like, we used to watch Cartoon Network, you know, and Mnet and all of that. So, you know. <laughs> so a lot of times it's more like a teaching moment for me. And it's just like that unconscious bias that they have about us. I think from the way you speak, you exhume so much confidence, mm -hmm. which I think is also lacking in a lot of um, mm -hmm. employees. Because before you even get to your supposed employer, you're fidgeting already. Yes. Some people are sweating and they can tell all of these characteristics. Yes. And knowing that, oh, can they actually give you some certain roles mm. to um, carry out or responsibilities? Right. Right. So what role will you precisely say confidence plays mm -hmm. in a person's life? going forward it plays a huge role like if you're not confident like you said it's it's going to be evident and like i shared earlier when you're speaking about yourself if you don't talk about the things you've achieved you can't brag right and that's yeah, something yes. we're not taught to do here like you know brag about the things you've done you know i worked on this project and i worked at, on this size of a team this is what we accomplished we brought in this amount of revenue like if you don't say all those things like they wouldn't really know so being confident is so important because it opens doors for you. Yeah. Um, you're able to speak up in meetings where, you know, people would typically not, sh not share. And people get to know you. And with the way it is abroad, like, you can speak to the CEO of the company directly. You have town halls. You can ask questions. And that's how you kind of build your brand as well. Also with your social media page. Because these companies will go on your social media pages as well and look at you and see if you have a good personal brand. Those are things that we need to start doing. Be confident about the things you've done. Like, don't shy away. Don't hide it. And see, village people are going to hear uh -huh. or know about it. Or, you know, if I say what I've accomplished, people will think I'm bragging. No, that's not it. Be confident. You know, know your worth. Know who you are. Know what you can ac accomplish. And also push yourself. Like, push yourself for more. Like, don't be scared at all. I think that's something that in every company I worked at, it was all, I was always known for speaking of yes asking those tough questions um you know sharing you know my thoughts and you know confidently you know, and that's something that at every point in time my leadership will always want my opinion on mm. things because they knew that you know i would confidently tell them you know the truth. are your parents actually sure they're proud of you at this they point. are very oh. proud <laughs> here in nigeria they yeah. can't visit yet they're not oh yes yes uh, definitely yeah, definitely <laughs> well, we just had to celebrate you today because you know one of the things we like to do as on your view is always highlight women who are doing great things mm -hmm. and we saw your profile say oh we got to bring her on but thank you so much Thank you for having coming me. Coming on our show. Thank you. Um, tell us about yourself. I wish you all the best. Well, well, thank you, you so much. about the program, though? Is, is, it, is it free to everyone to attend? Uh, so there is, there is a little ticket fee because it's a training and they'll get certified at the end. So it actually starts tomorrow. It's oh, Thursday, okay. April 11th to 13th um, at the Zone Bagada. It's a three-day training and conference. Mm. And we're covering um, unlocking global career opportunities. And we're focusing on business analysis, data analysis, project management, product management and user research. And then we're also bringing in speakers to talk about how to jackpot for those who want to jackpot, mm. how to move abroad. And then those who want to be here and earn in dollars, we're also bringing in a speaker mm. to share how you can land remote opportunities mm. from Nigeria. So it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, thank okay. you. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right, that's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye, Bye. for now. Bye.